What is up, guys? It is your least favorite vlogger, Brian636, here with episode 38 of Hood Eats. Now, today is special for a lot of reasons. It's the first time that we're actually going to be going out to a near suburb of Chicago to try out Chicago's most famous hot dog, and I know a lot of you guys already know what that is. But most importantly, this is the first video on my channel in the 12 years that I've been making YouTube videos that is not going to have one single motorcycle in it. <laughs> I made a video about a year and a half ago that I was looking for a car and I got a car pretty soon after and I just haven't made a vlog on it mostly fear of rejection from you guys being like man stick to bikes you know screw cars blah 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 but after so long I feel like I need to show you guys this aspect of my life because I do love it and I think it's a really special car but before I even turn around the camera know that I will never give up my love for bikes ever because I know there's other moto vloggers on the platform that have done so and I'm not going to be one of them. But without further ado, check out my GTO. So this is my 2004 Pontiac GTO. I don't know what it is about this car, but it was something that stuck with me from early childhood. And it was always one of those cars that I wanted when I was growing up. So last year when I finally saved up enough money to have like a nice toy car like this, I went and I bought it. And I had an absolute blast in it up until about three weeks of owning it. When one of the fuel lines under here got rubbed loose, the whole engine bay went up in smoke. No words, guys. So I was super disappointed, and it was down for over the winter. I've had the car back in its current state pretty much all spring, all summer, and now into the fall. And I've just been really intimidated to show you guys. The GTO really became famous in the 60s when Pontiac started offering it as an option to get around sanctions of American car builders putting way too much power in cars. And it was extremely popular, still is extremely popular with muzzle heads today, the classic GTO, but it got killed off in the 70s. And that's pretty much where Pontiac left it, was killed until 2004 came around. Pontiac actually imported these cars from Australia and they were supposed to be here in like 2002, but with all the sanctions and bullshit to get this car into the US, they didn't even end up getting to the sales floors until 2004. Now in 2004, they came with a 5.7 LS1 in it. And then in 2005 and 2006, they came with a 6.0 in it. So this car originally came with a 5.7. And in 2006, after Pontiac saw not nearly the amount of sales that they wanted to, they killed the car. And the GTO has been dead ever since. Now I won't go too in depth of what's into the car, but from the LS1, we swapped it to a brand new LS3 crate motor, put a comps cam in it, and basically just kept things pretty basic under the hood. I know a lot of people are like, why don't you throw boost at it? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Because this already makes enough horsepower to have fun. It did a new hood on it as well. And then just a lot of little odds and ends. All right, so I showed you a little bit about my car. Let's get on the road. I'm hungry. And for the first time ever, I don't know if you can see her behind those 5% tents, but we have a guest today on hoodies. <laughs> and we are going to go to Chicago's probably most infamous hot dog stand that we have. Let's do it. All right, guys, let's go to fucking Gene and Jude. It's kind of nice being able to have somebody with us for a hoodie. We get to buy double the hot dogs. Although I'm probably going to get a lot of funny looks for wearing a helmet in a car. Got some abandoned houses over here. Totally forgot I have my Insta360 on the back fender mounted. Kinda excited to see how that looks, to be honest. I really like to be able to turn my exhaust quieter and louder. That's kinda nice, too. If anyone makes cutouts for bikes, but that would be pretty cool if they did. She goes, man. She's got some giddy up to her. Do a little second gear punch, 30. Her current 
currently in the Maywood neighborhood. I don't know how good of visuals you get inside the car compared to, you know, on the bike. I know it's a, probably a better 360 on a bike, but this is, you know, technically a Chicago suburb, but Maywood has seen its better days. A lot of Section 8 housing got moved out here when the projects got destroyed in the late 90s, early 2000s. And a lot of these homes became rental properties as well that accepted Section 8 vouchers. And a couple of these close west suburbs, I'm talking like Maywood, Bellwood, even like Cicero, um, have definitely experienced an influx in violence. A lot of things that people would associate with the city goes on out here too, in, in the suburbs. Sometimes these suburbs look a lot rougher than parts of the city. The left here on Madison Street, same Madison Street that we do, a lot of our hoodies on. This one just runs farther west outside of the city. All the backfires. Got a little head unit here too. I wish I could play music while we're driving, but I can't. I get copyrighted. The inside's in pretty damn good condition though. A lot of times when I see these GTOs when I was looking for them, you know, a year ago, a lot of the leather was separating, it was tearing, uh, the headliner was sagging. That's all just stuff not really happening on this one, or at least yet. And just like that, we have officially entered the village of River Grove. Let me tell you a little bit about Gene and Jude's. So in the mid 1940s, a city worker by the name of Gene was attending a baseball game at the infamous Wrigley Field watching the Cubs. He proceeded to do what anyone does at a baseball game and get a hot dog. However, this time he put french fries on his hot dog and noted that the extra salt and crunch that they produced was something that he really liked. It was also super convenient because you could carry it on your dog and not just a bag of fries. In 1950, after saving up a couple years, him and another buddy that he worked with by the name of Jude put their money together and opened up this little hot dog stand right on the outskirts of Chicago off of Grand Avenue. Now, over the years, it has become extremely infamous for them to not carry any ketchup in the whole restaurant. This is the place that all your friends and everyone else who talked to you about a Chicago dog was talking about. They believe that their Vienna beef, dog, sweet relish, onion, and mustard with their naturally cut french fries is more than enough to satisfy you. And if you're that picky, then you should choose another hot dog stand. That mentality and that recipe has gained them the notoriety of being Chicago's best hot dog time and time again. Now I know a lot of other people will argue with the fact of Maxwell's or Portillo's, and you're absolutely right. However, this is just probably the most famous hot dog out of Chicago. Should I take off my helmet? Do I leave my helmet on? Let's do it. You gotta put some of the fries on the side when you take this thing down. But it comes with hot peppers, mustard, sweet relish, onions, and a dog. Absolutely amazing. Had a great experience here. Even a couple of the workers came out. Nick and Mill, awesome dudes. 10 out of 10 service. Hot dogs. Some of the best I've had, man. For real. Sick. <laughs> Don't know how all these camera mounts are going to end up looking. Totally forgot to. We put a fire extinguisher back there. <laughs> Just in case. I'd love to figure out a way to have a small enough one to carry on the bikes. These people brought a whole tiki table and everything to Gene and Drew's. This is a full experience. This oil pressure gauge doesn't work, but this oil pressure gauge does. Just in case anyone's looking to that and be like, Brian, you got no oil pressure. Hover right around 50, 60. You know what? I got to say, those are some of the most unique hot dogs I think I've ever had. They're very, you know, when you when you had a hot dog from Gene and Jude's. The meat has a snap or the french fries, I don't know. Whenever you take a bite, it like pops full of flavor. And they got those hot peppers in there too, which are not that hot. I normally am a baby when it comes to hot peppers. Like Maxwell Street switched over to those actual like hot, hot peppers. I can't do that. God damn, this thing sounds good. <laughs> Makes you just laugh. Episode 38 with a car. I'm having a good time doing it. I really hope this footage is coming out just how I hope it is. Like you can see good enough around us what's going on. Actually go to our first car show yesterday. We had a good time out there, man. All right, guys, this is the first car show that the GTO has been at. It fits right in. Plenty of American muscle. Over here at Porter Pipe and Supply. The old, mid, and new muscle out there. Not too much foreign. This is the exact reason I don't even drive this thing during the day most of the time. Especially as we get closer towards the city here, away from the burbs. God, 
You just sit. Oh my god, that bitch has her pants off in the middle of the fucking street. Oh my god. She literally just pulled over and peed in the drain in the middle of fucking First Avenue. Oh, Chicago. What are we gonna do with you? Yeah, excuse me, officer. A lot of abandoned buildings out here in these suburbs. These are not the suburbs that, you know, most people probably think about when they think of the suburbs. These close, close ones are definitely feeling the effects of the drug, drug and violence epidemic plaguing our city. Nothing but traffic. <laughs> You'd probably be wearing a helmet and I should probably be wearing a ski mask. Man, the three-wheeler is swerving all over the damn place trying to catch us now. Alright guys, you saw my car. We went in Jeet and Jude's. We had some of Chicago's best hot dogs. Most importantly, we got to see the car. If you guys enjoyed this episode of Hood Eats, make sure to give it a big fat like. Please, I'm going to be checking the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the car. Let me know what you think of the car vlogs. Maybe I'll be able to get you guys out at night when there's, you know, a car meet going on. Maybe some races, some drifting, stuff like that. Let me know what you think of that. This is your least favorite moto vlogger slash, I guess now, car vlogger, Brian636. I love y'all. Respect life. I'm out of here. Peace.